Hey, what's up guys? This is Sol with another video. Uh, these are the sponsors right up above and don't worry, your screen is not busted. I just have it paused right now. Uh, but I'm gonna do some commentary that I did of a three chest run that I did on my Protection Paladin in these uh, horrific visions. Um, a little bit of a premise though, uh, I wanna let you know that this is on the PTR and what I was able to do was transfer my character over to the PTR multiple times and just do multiple runs. So in a way, this is, I guess I'm kind of cheating I'm, or I'm practicing, but you can do this too. All you need to have are uh, a, a vessel of horrific, uh, of horrific visions, of course, and at least 100 corrupted mementos. Because what happens when you transfer your character over to the PTR, that stuff gets wiped. All your progression on your Titanic research goes away, including your ability to deploy those sanity restoration orbs, which is, you know, obviously something that you very much need. Uh, but if you have this on hand, then you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to do this. Um, also. Like I said, I'm doing this on my uh, Protection Paladin, so I have a lot of survivability at the expense of a good bit of DPS. I also don't have any fantastic corruption abilities. All I have is the Void Ritual, which I'll demonstrate here, and let me just get, uh, you know, let me get this thing started. Uh, so, yeah. So we're going to get started here. Um, I The only really... I, I did give myself, I guess, some food buffs and raid buffs. Um, I have invisibility pots, and I'm going to use one throughout this run. Um, you do have the opportunity to use it more than once uh, throughout here if you really wanted to, uh, but in this footage that I'm going to show you, um, I only use it once. So I, I could have uh, went behind some of the buildings here and skip a couple of packs, but since I'm going to be coming back here, I just go for it right again. Or, or, or I just go straight for it. So of course I start off with the shaman before he deploys a totem, which are very very annoying things that can uh, death grip you. Uh, after I take that guy out, the rest of the guys are not super uh, they're not super troublesome. Uh, but I go straight for the honor guards since I'm going to be going uh, for uh, going for thrall thrall's room uh, when I'm done and through with all this here. The honor guards, they don't cause too much trouble. You just want to make sure that you interrupt these guys uh, very quickly and, and otherwise stay out of their break spirit ability. That causes all sorts of problems. So if there's an interrupt right over there. Let me take this guy out. Although he's taking a little bit longer than normal. And okay, cool. There we go. So I think, um, I think here I blinked. I was kind of hesitating as to whether I wanted to use an invisibility potion. I opted not to because uh, the five minute cooldown would just be way too long. So I go straight for the shaman, try to take him out. I stun him a little bit too late. He already deployed a totem. So your best bet when dealing with these shaman is to stun them right away. Open up with a stun, hit them with a few hard hitting burst attacks, uh, take them out quick before they deploy a totem because that'll save a few globals of having to take out those totems and you can concentrate on something like anything else. So we're going to proceed up towards uh, Zakan's area. We're going to do this one first. Champions, we've been needing your help. And notice that the madness that we're going to deal with is Dark Delusions. So I'm going to pull these little Voidwalker guys over there, pop cooldowns, and go for the Decimator. So he does an ability called Surging Fist, where he charges, uh, and then he throws this big purple thing, come and that boomerangs back to him. So you have to dodge him. Uh, several times whenever he does the sequence and I think I'll mess up here. So here he does he does the purple thing I didn't dodge it too well and yet so there we go. <laughs> I got hit by that one uh, So you want to make sure that you have clearance sometimes these posts or or you know fences They'll cause problems for you. There's a good dodge right over there and ideally you want all these mobs to die around the same time um, although you Although it probably would be best if you can get the void walkers or those little yeah those little void walkers to die quickly, so that way Zakan will complete his whole RP sort of dealy and open this door up for you, especially before the dark delusions come and take you out. So your objective here is to take out all of the totems here, and unfortunately you have to take them out in order. So what I opted to do here is to try and pull uh, a decent number of mobs and then drag them back to the original totems. That way, by the time they're all dead, I'm able to start clicking the totems and then progress. Um, I did, in previous runs, I tried pulling all of the mobs, like all the way up towards almost the uh, mini boss that's here. 
Uh, but that ended up being a little bit risky. There were a few wipes that I had, and uh, and in this case, because I spent some time killing some extra mobs, um, doing that here would have been a bad idea. I would have wasted uh, a bit too much time. It would have been extremely risky. So instead, I opted to just get like a couple of packs and then backtrack a little bit. So yeah, here I am. I'm going to go back. It is a little bit annoying that, that you have to take these out in order, but... Well, it is what it is. But with a few seconds to spare, I'm going to go a little bit closer and throw down this sanity orb. Notice that the uh, that the purple guy, the Dark Delusion, has to go all the way up. He can't just he doesn't just float to you. Uh, he has to follow uh, line of sight rules or, or pathing rules. And in this case, since I'm still on the sanity orb, it doesn't even affect me anyway. In this case, I'm going to I'm going to take take this pack out. Not a problem. Once again, make sure you take out the shaman first before anything. Otherwise, I mean, you would it would it would be absolutely awful to have the totem pull you out of a sanity thing. I don't know if that actually works or whatnot. So in this case, we're gonna go for this last totem. This one isn't so. This one isn't so bad at all. We've taken out all the deadly packs, and maybe we could have used an invisibility potion there to skip some of the other packs. Um, but I wanted to skip a certain other pack, and I'm going to show you that in just a few moments. So let's collect this last guy. Uh, those two mobs over there you can completely skip and save yourself a few seconds of headache. Although you can kill them if you really want them in mementos. And now let's go for this Oblivion guy. So he casts Hopelessness. All it really is is he throws down a glowing orb for you to stand in. You don't want to get hit by these waves, and it can possibly it can potentially get a little bit overwhelming if you get caught up in it. Um, but otherwise, just try to avoid them. Run into the orb as soon as you can and blow this guy up. These guys don't have even for a tank. These guys don't have like terribly much life. So even if you don't have a whole lot of uh, DPS, you can still get through here pretty fine. So we're gonna jump down here. We're gonna go behind uh, Garrosh's room. I'm going to pop this orb, or I'm sorry, pop this invisibility potion and skip all these little guys right here. They're not too consequential, but it saves us a couple of seconds, and hey, I'm cool with saving a couple of seconds. Well, let's get past that, uh, that last pack, make our way in, and I opt to go for this tentacle. I open up with a stun because he annoys me a lot. It burrows and then it pops up elsewhere. And the last thing that I want to do is lose a mob uh, and, and, keep, and lose track of it. Because otherwise I don't want to feel like I'm out of combat. And I'm not out of combat because I missed a tentacle that's all the way back there doing stuff. So this Annihilator here isn't too threatening. He does a pushback, which is a little bit annoying. But his Orb of Annihilation is something that he telegraphs well in advance. Uh, because as soon as he starts casting this orb ability, he's going to throw it in the direction that you're standing in, right when the cast begins. So as soon as it does, just move out of the way, and then, we'll, and then it will go into a place that you are not, and you will have very little trouble uh, uh, avoiding it. So now we need to revive Corona. Sometimes it can be a little bit annoying because the Dark Delusion might be very close, so you need to sort of kite it away. Otherwise, you'll get stunned for a few seconds, and that's going to waste a little bit of time. This hallway here is um, from... It appears that it's required that you got to take out all the mobs here, uh, and you have, to, you have to do a lot of clicking here as well, so you can't just skip them. I think I got hit by a stun there because I think I didn't interrupt something. Either that or, or I got hit by a dark delusion. But I'm clearly running out of sanity. I'm kind of in the danger zone here. But I want to take another extra second or two to get a click in uh, and see if I can possibly get some sanity back here. But this is purple liquid, which does not unfortunately restore sanity. I think it's the green one that restores sanity. But I'm cutting it close, I only have about 20 sanity left, so here we go. I'll pop my second orb, and then I'll start pulling these mobs here. So notice that the tentacle doesn't move, which is so annoying. <laughs> I hate fighting those things, but it's going to get to me eventually. There we go. You see a little swirly on the ground, but um, I want to blow it up quick, make sure that it is not going to bother me later, or that I, or even worse, I lose it and not realize it. 
and then we'll move on. So no extra objectives, nothing like that. We're just going to let Garona do her thing. Check the tailoring shop and orphanage. Check out the Dominator. Target that one first. Make sure that it doesn't get its stun off. I mean, the Void Bolt's not a big deal. I don't know why I interrupted that, but it's the Touch of the Abyss that you want to take care of. Fortunately, being a Paladin lets me interrupt all sorts of stuff. Uh, this mob uh, in the back comes out whenever you open up that, that door that I clicked on just earlier. So make sure you pick it up. You don't... Just like the tentacle, you want to make sure that you're always engaged or that you always know what you're in combat with. Losing things can be extremely, extremely troublesome here, especially if you're trying to click something, but you can't if you're, but you're in combat or if you're trying to mount up. Uh, all those things can, um, can really slow you down. So right now we're still really good on insanity. Oh, I'm sorry, sanity. Um, I'm skipping vials. Vials will probably play a, a larger role when I'm trying to do four or five chests, but for right now it's not a huge deal. Uh, which, which one is this? This is black liquid. So this gives me um, a fire. This uh, lets me spew out fire randomly, which helps a little bit. A little bit of DPS always helps. Same thing with pots and all that, although um, apart from the in invisibility pot, I didn't use anything here. So this guy, of course, you want to blow up. Uh, the Void Torrent, you want to put a little bit of distance between yourself and the mini-boss, or otherwise have a speed boost to help you get fa to get through this. The Cries of the Void is something that DPS can probably power through, but as a tank, I opted to not do it. I just took the sanity damage and uh, decide to wait until he, he finishes his cast, because the shield will just disappear on its own anyway. That way I'm not wasting DPS on something that's futile. So just avoid this stuff and blow him up. And right there is a totem for me to click. I'll click that guy. While you're flying back, uh, you don't lose sanity. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to calculate. But this will take me back to the very beginning. Back to where I cleared, all, uh, where I cleared out a whole bunch of mobs. And it's just like an easy walk right over. So I guess what I could have done is um, I could have used another invisibility pot at that point, maybe. Um, but well, it just, it just really depends on when you want to use that potion or if it's even necessary for you. But I used my last pot for this and I'm taking on crawl. So I could have, if I happen to have that ability that lets me see chests in these tainted areas, I could have used that. Uh, to do some exploring and get some extra mementos out of that, uh, but since I can't really get access to that in the PTR, uh, not a big deal. As you know, the uh, boss gets abilities based on the mini bosses that you got. Um, for example, you saw the hopelessness over there that I failed to get into. That's real good. But he's, he still does the same abilities. So here's the Cries of, uh, of the Void. And just like before, I'm going to ignore it. I'm just going to take the sanity hits and save my abilities for when I know that it's going to do damage to him. Seismic Slam still acts the same. Um, all these abilities pretty much behave the same way. Just kind of make sure we avoid stuff. Oh, there's that fire. Avoid the slam. And otherwise, uh, doing a three chest run, it's not super bad. Now keep in mind that I don't have any of the cool corruption stuff. I just have Void Ritual, which I think, yeah, it looks like it's ticking right now. Go me. <laughs> um, but other important abilities would include using uh, the Crucible of Flame. Having strong burst for certain mobs like Shaman are extremely helpful. Or having more ranged in order to pull some mobs over to you and get started. But as you can see, it's not so bad doing a three chest run. Um, and my cloak at the moment for this run is level five. So I'm doing the first quest to get this, uh, you know, these Fear and Flesh books. I only needed one, so I technically didn't need to do two runs. I just needed to do one. After this, I will in fact need to get uh, three chests cleared, or sort of. I can just do the two um, corrupted areas and not have to take out Thrall, and I'll still get uh, what I want. Uh, but that's going to be pretty much it. So I hope this was helpful. 
And if it was, hit a like, and otherwise stay tuned for more guides like this. Um, stay tuned for the horrific uh, Visions for Dummies Part 2. It's going to come later this week. And otherwise, I'll see you for the next thing. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Stand.